we on, Rich? We're good? Okay. Falling apart up here. Okay, good morning, Stony Creek. And good morning to all of you joining us on Facebook or listening on the radio. Um, as you can see, the, uh, the taller, older elves were in over the weekend decorating. Now, after church, the shorter elves are going to be busy on the tree. And we'll still allow the older elves to help, too. It would be safer that way. Um, it's that time of the year when we have the opportunity to show our appreciation for the Stony Creek staff. Uh, the Little White Church, which is located on the table in the narthex, will be accepting donations for their for, uh, remembrance for Christmas. You can also put a donation in the offering tree. Uh, and the voice is kind of here and kind of not, so I apologize. Sometimes I'm going to sound like Mickey Mouse. Sometimes I will be a bass. So we'll just work with it. So the people we are celebrating for their dedication to the church are Pastor Michael and Tammy there, Katie Bunye, and Rich and Teresa Brifta. And if you write a check if you could just write in the memo section that it's for the staff Christmas. On Tuesday, Will and Bill, hopefully we'll see you around three on Tuesday. Uh, we'll be doing the food gatherers fresh produce box distribution. Uh, and there is some flyers being that you can get about the poinsettias that are going to be on sale and decorating the uh, rest of the church will take place after the service and uh, after the, everyone has a chance to partake in some refreshments. Pastor Michael's doing an Advent study. There's information out in the narthex about that to join him. And I think, Fonda? You've got something to add? Fonda, real quick, I just want to say that they may not be able to hear you right now. So this is about poinsettia order forms. So if you need one, this is Fonda, or you can get one from the ushers. But we appreciate your help, Fonda, and everybody for purchasing. And they are $20 this year for a donation. Okay. an ornament for the memorial tree to bring it and then pandemic etc hit so that there will be a small tree 
and that will be our memorial tree. We will put up the memorials that have been given, but if anyone's lost a special someone that they'd like remembered, just bring your ornament and put it on the small tree that'll be there by next week. Uh, it's out there now, but it just hasn't been decorated. And perhaps sometime over the last few years, you have lost a family member that you'd like to have remembered. And feel free to add an ornament in their memory, should you desire to do so. I'm in trouble with trees this year, because I tried to plug that one in and found out that it's not lighting. There will be a small tree before next Saturday, and it will be decorated. Um, and I apologize for that, but stay and help decorate the large one. Small tree is going to be retired, and I don't know where we're going to retire it to. Maybe outside. Well, I think maybe we could put it outside with suet feeders all over it so we don't forget our little furry friends. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Okay. Go, Teresa. Thank you, Fonda. <laughs> and also, I wanted to thank everyone who helped yesterday because we have a beautiful sanctuary to honor God and our newborn Savior. So thank you for your contributions. And also, be sure to head following the service with communion head to the fellowship hall because I want to say a special thank you to everyone who has made extra food for today because we have a lot of nice yummy donations so be sure to get a lunch snack because we have extra goodies today get some food and then go ahead and help with decoration of the large tree and other things in the sanctuary as Fonda said the small tree we're holding off for the time being but thank you again your help is appreciated and with that, the praise band will take it away.
This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was engaged to marry Joseph, but before they married, she learned that she was pregnant by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because Mary's husband Joseph was a good man, he did not want to disgrace her in public, so he planned to divorce her secretly. While Joseph thought about these things, an angel of the Lord came to him in a dream. The angel said, Joseph, descendant of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because the baby in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. First Sunday of Advent, and if you want to look at the insert, rejoice always, pray without ceasing. We, we give thanks, thanks in all circumstances, circumstances for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Jesus. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank my God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. For in him you have been enriched in every way with all kinds of speech and with all knowledge. God thus confirming our testimony about Christ among you. Therefore you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. We will also keep you firm to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. You have has called who has called you into worship with his son Jesus Christ our Lord. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Loyal, constant, true, and steadfast. This is what it means to be faithful. And God is faithful. When God makes a promise, you can always trust that God will do what God says. God promised us a Messiah. And in this season of Advent, we rejoice with that promise of the Messiah. God, this child of hope, was fulfilled. We have met people who have made promises, but who have not followed through. God never fails. With, when, we, when our faithful God calls us to a partnership, we are reminded that this is no simple business partnership, but a full sharing, including sharing of resources and sharing in the rewards. Ever since the beginning, God was not solitary, but in partnership. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. God calls us to be in partnership with Jesus, to share fully in God's mission together. United Methodist missionaries understand partnership. They are called from everywhere to serve everywhere. But it's not just missionaries who serve. All Christians are partners together, and together we are in partnership with the Lord. God is faithful, and we are called to God. God calls us to partnership. Partnership with our Savior, Jesus Christ our Lord, the light of the world. We are not alone. We work together. God is faithful. Hallelujah. God is faithful. Rejoice always. The child of light is coming. has enriched us in every way, in speech, knowledge, and spiritual gifts. From the fellowship of Jesus Christ, we are sent out to share with thanksgiving what we have received.
Please rise as you are able and join in our doxology number 95 in the hymnal. We thank you that Christ is being revealed in every time and place until he comes again in the fullness of glory. Strengthen our testimony and spiritual gifts. Increase generosity in us, we pray, as we wait for the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Well, good morning again. I am Pastor Michael. Welcome to Stony Creek United Methodist Church. I'm very happy to see you all here on this first Sunday of Advent. A um, couple quick things. Uh, some of you may have received an email this morning with an Advent devotional. Um, if you liked it, you'll get more. If you didn't, there's an option to unsubscribe at the bottom. Um, and if you did not get um, the devotional but would like one, please send me an email. I'll add you to the list. Um, the focus for the devotionals for Advent uh, in the email are going, looking at different Christmas songs throughout uh, the year and how it ties into different things. So I know this is a congregation that likes music, and I thought that could be a nice, nice way to celebrate Advent. So um, is there anything important? Other announcements? Hmm? Okay. Well, then I'd like to invite our children and youth to come hang out with me for a couple minutes. Ooh, you've got a giraffe. Giraffica, okay. It is a chair, because getting off the floor is becoming difficult. <laughs> so how are you guys doing this morning? We are definitely getting closer. Yes, there is a Pokemon raid at 2 o'clock. What the? <laughs> All right, so we have been learning about who? Uh, oh, uh, Jacob. Jacob Usopp, and Usopp. Uh, the person that was like tricking us. Uh, Esau. Yeah, but there's, there was like the. It was like the. Oh yeah, Rebecca, 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 and uh, his name meant laughter, right? Jacob. No, 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 it was the dad. Oh, right? uh, yeah. now you're getting me confused. I don't know. That's okay. I know. So, we're learning about a difficult time in Jacob's life when he experienced God's presence in an unexpected way. When do you guys feel God near you? Like every single day. Always every us. Okay. Every Only on Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> like every single day of the year until when you like when it's like your birthday, God or Jesus doesn't show up. Because like I mean I mean it's only except when you guys are like in a car or something or like going somewhere. That's not when you see it. So you don't get in a car crash or something, or like, uh, so I mean, he would. Okie dokie. Moving on. <laughs> so, I would like to read you guys a story. A story about uh, ducks? No, it's about <laughs> Jacob's ladder. A ladder? Yeah. Can you make a ladder? Well, you're going to find out. <laughs> so, here's Jacob. What is he doing? Uh, building. 
building? That's right, he's sleeping. And then while people are walking on a cloud staircase, how is, yeah. that, how is that possible? That's a ladder, you're right. Uh, so it's is, that like the, is that like the, is there a bunch of clouds? It makes me think of like the stairway to heaven up. Well, we're going to find out. You ready? Jacob stole Esau's blessing. We learned that last week. Uh-huh. Esau was very angry. And Jacob was very scared, so he ran away to his uncle's house. And after a day of walking, he walked the whole day. Jacob was sleepy, so he laid his head on a rock. He fell fast asleep. And Jacob dreamed about God. He saw a ladder going from the ground up to the sky a big ladder. And God's messengers went up and down the ladder. And God appeared and said, Jacob, I am always with you. You will be a blessing. Jacob woke up and knew that God would always be with him. I wonder what it must have been like for Jacob to see God. What do you think? And we don't, yeah, go ahead. It would have been surprising because, like, God, God's there with you, but he's not, like, a thing or a person. Well, he is a person, but, like, he's... We don't normally get to see him, yeah. see him, right. But Jacob got to, yeah. Okay, well, well, God and Jesus are in the world. They're always here, okay? We just don't get to see them in real life. We don't get to see them the way we get to see other people and other things. But we will get to... Once we get up. That's right. Okay, so... No, 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 we're not getting into that today. All right. No, God made ducks. Do you know how God made ducks? He took a chicken and put a gazoo in its mouth. I need my drummer back up there. Yes. I, we'll cover that another week. Okay, can we do a repeat after me prayer? Okay, here we go. Dear God, thank you for being with us. Always amen. You guys did a great job. Thank you for coming and hanging out with me. If you would like a sucker, you can have one. And then I believe it's off to Sunday school and kids club. What? How did God make um, how did God make dolphins? Yeah, how did make Wait, how did they make dolphins? dolphins? <laughs> you know, I wasn't there when that was happening, so it's gonna be one of those questions you're just gonna have to ask when they you put, get like, to a meet him. Like, did, did they use a shark, put a pool noodle down its throat, and make it a long sticky dog? I don't know. I don't know. It took a chicken and put yeah, a kazoo in its mouth. <laughs> I know. I should know better. You'd think I'd know better, but what's the fun in that? All right, if the rest of you would rise as you are able for our hymn number 220, Angels from the Realms of Glory.
Please be seated. Now is the time that we lift before God and God's people the things that give us cause for pause that may be weighing us down, keeping us up at night, but also those things that give us joy and excitement, the things that we celebrate. Do we have any joys or concerns we'd like to lift up this morning? Well, I'm going to start. Uh, my daughter up in, uh, where did she live? Minnesota. She had a little bit of a problem this last weekend. She had to have her appendix removed. Ooh. So last night uh, I called her and uh, she said, well, I'm still waiting for the doctor to let me go home. So uh, but with like prayers for Jill and uh, she's going to be coming home here about in a week and she's going to be here for three weeks, so it's going to be nice to have her there home. My son John and Hallie had gotten married on November 10th. It was a beautiful wedding up in Frankenmuth. They just arrived home Friday after a nine-hour flight back from Germany. Uh, they were gone 10 days right before Thanksgiving. So they left for uh, Switzerland first and didn't have any problems going over. But on the way back from Berlin to Amsterdam, my son had got pulled over by the customs people because of his name being so John Charles Davis. There's a lot of them out there. So Hallie got through with all the luggage, but he had to stay behind just to do a credit check on him. And they finally made it home uh, Friday night after a nine hour flight. So I'm thankful that they're back home and also that they had a great time over there. They all there, come on. Yes, there is. So many Bob. people here today, there's a few. Uh, Bob. Yes, dear. Gotcha. Up here. Um, I'd like to ask for prayers for my, one of my closest friends. Some of you that went to Lincoln probably remember Mr. Moran um, and his wife Nancy. Nancy actually graduated a year before I did in 66, uh, Nancy was just diagnosed with Alzheimer's, and, and it's uh, very sudden. Uh, she first was diagnosed with cognitive mental impairment, and then within about a month, there was a very noticeable decrease in her health. So prayers for Nancy as we embark on our journey with her through this Diagnosis. Thank you. All right, if you would please open your black hymnals, The Faith We Sing, to number 2071 for our invitation to prayer. join me once again in an attitude of prayer. God of power and glory, we remember your awesome deeds across the ages, the times you saved us and brought us home. Yet we also remember times when we felt alone and afraid. Oh God, we are your people, the work of your hand. Look upon us with your shining face, especially in the time of need. We pray for those who look to you for healing and hope those who are sick or recuperating from illness and injury, 
We especially lift up Jill as she recovers from her appendix removal. We lift up Nancy facing a diagnosis that that is life-changing and very difficult, not only for her, but for all of her friends and family and loved ones. Those who are lonely and need compassion and care. Those for whom the holidays bring sorrow or pain. Those whose deep sadness overshadows joy. Let your face shine upon us, O God. We pray for people in need of restoration and reconciliation, for those battling addictions and those in recovery, for people estranged from those they love, for someone lost in grief, for someone far from home. Let your face shine upon us, O God, that we might be saved. Renew the spirit of a world grown weary with waiting and hoping. Especially we pray for wars to end. We ask for your intervention, your guidance, your hope in places like the Ukraine and Russia, Israel and Palestine. We pray for hunger and poverty to be crowded out by abundance. And we pray too for the church because we know we also grow weary in our waiting and watching for your power and glory to be made known. Grant us clarity, passion, and true fellowship so that we are awake to your presence. We also give you thanks this day for safe travels for our loved ones, especially those coming from great distances. We ask for travel mercies for all of us as we go out and about, whether going long distances to visit friends or loved ones, or even just about in our own community as we go about our day. Help us to hold mercy, grace, and love for one another. And let your face shine upon the church and all this weary world, we pray, in the name of the one born in a manger and coming again on clouds of glory. Amen. If you would please join with me in our prayer for illumination. Gracious God, heaven and earth will pass away, but your words will not pass away. Your word stands forever. May our generation be attentive so that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we remember your ways and gladly do right, meeting you wherever and whenever you appear. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Our first scripture reading for this morning is from Isaiah chapter 64, verses 1 through 9. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains would tremble before you, as when fire sets twigs ablaze and causes water to boil, come down to make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. For when you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down, and the mountains trembled before you. Since ancient times no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. You come to the help of those who gladly do right, who remember your ways. But when we continued to sin, sin against them, you were angry. How then can we be saved? All of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf, and like the wind, our sins swept us away. No one calls on your name or strives to lay hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have given us over to our sins. Yet you, Lord, are our Father. We are the clay, you are the potter. 
We are all the work of your hand. Do not be angry beyond measure, Lord. Do not remember our sins forever. O oh, look on us, we pray, for we are all your people. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our next hymn will be Lo, How a Rose Air Blooming from the Red Hymnal, uh, page 216. be seated. Our second scripture reading for this morning can be found beginning on page 1006 in the Bibles in the pews. We are in the Gospel of Mark, the 13th chapter, verses 24 through 37. But in those days, following that distress, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, people will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that it is near, right at the door. Truly I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with their assigned task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening, or at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. This is the word of God for the people of God. If you'd please join me once again in an attitude of prayer. God of the past, present, and future, you see all time at once. You have always been and will always be. Your time is not our time, but we trust in your ways, even when we do not understand them or expect them. 
Help strengthen that trust and our faith through the sending of your Holy Spirit into our hearts and minds so that we might share with others the good news of Jesus Christ. And now may the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts together in this place be pleasing in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, they, although I can't say for sure who they are, but they say that home is where the heart is. They also say that home is where you make it, that home is not a place, but a feeling, that there is no place like home, and that home is where one starts from. And in truth, everybody probably has their own slightly different definition of home, as well as those places where, where we belong. Some people may find home not in physical spaces, but instead in belonging to a community that accepts us for the entirety of who God created us to be. You know, in a way, I have to say, I believe that we can claim both Advent and Christmas as, as sorts of homecomings. I mean, think about it. God found a new home among us in the flesh and blood of Jesus Christ. And scripture tells us that God will find this home again in the second coming of Christ as we await that return. The dwelling places where we find Christ today can be in our mangers surrounded by parents and shepherds and magi and a whole variety of animals and also through the moves of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes those dwelling places can take us by surprise. Sometimes those dwelling places can also be where we experience the most comfort and joy, where we truly belong in creation. During the coming weeks through December, we will be talking more about these concepts of home and, and where we belong in relationship to them, to each other, and to God. Advent is called the season of anticipation because we are waiting for Christ to come among us. God made flesh both human and divine. Christ came into a world that too often rejected him even though he was always just exactly where he needed to be. As the church calendar and liturgical year begin anew, I wonder if we were to think about it, how might we answer the question of where do we physically, mentally, and spiritually find ourselves as we make preparations for the coming of Christ? And for that matter, what preparations are we making? As we think about the different interpretations of home, what are some of the stops along the way that provide life and sustenance? And what do we need to do to seek those places of belonging? As we begin talking about and exploring the, these questions about home and belonging, some people may find it a bit challenging to talk about, and that, that's okay. Life experience and other things that inform our, our being, our understanding of things, things that influence us, everyone might perceive things a little differently. But if you do find yourself facing that kind of challenge, I ask that you would consider what are your yearnings to find those places in space. As a faith community, the body of Christ, we then need to consider how we can embody those places and spaces for one another in our communities. Now, on November 16th, 1987, so just over 36 years ago, something amazing happened. The American rock band R.E.M. released what would become a top 100 billboard hit titled, It's the End of the World as We Know It. And yes, Teresa and I in the worship committee debated about making that our second hymn for the day. 
However, we weren't sure if everyone was going to be able to keep up with the words because he does talk kind of fast. But we thought about it. Now, the next 36 years featured this song time and time again in various ways, including being played all day on December 21st, 2012, when you might remember there were some people predicting the world was going to end because of something to do with the Mayan calendar. The song also saw an increase in downloads and streaming in March of 2020 amid the global pandemic, with online downloads rising 184% and streaming rising 48%. R.E.M.'s classic number still remains one of the most popular and well-known apocalypse and and sickness-themed songs. The 2012 hysterics have been only one of countless claims for the world to come to an end. People have been trying to predict the end of the world for a very, 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 very long time. So far, nobody's been right because we're still here. I do wonder sometimes if, if we remember or maybe even realize that, that Advent begins by talking about the end of the world as we know it. What did he just say? Did he just say Advent begins talking about the end of the world? I thought Advent was about leading up to Christmas. Advent is when we put up these beautiful decorations and we go to holiday parties and we buy presents for people and and all that Christmas kind of stuff. What's this end of the world talk all about? And believe me, I understand the confusion. We like to keep things nice and light, thinking about that sweet baby Jesus lying in a manger when we get to that Christmas Eve, Christmas morning. But then, just as we are all set for joy and celebration, we have Mark's Gospel. Mark's Gospel that unsettles us on this first Sunday of Advent. I mean, let's be real. It would be so much nicer to be thinking about this precious infant, wouldn't it? The truth is, though, we have to remember that Advent is also about that day and hour when Christ returns. And there is still an incredible amount of uncertainty about that day and hour. Humanity, it seems to me, has become obsessed with this idea of the end of the world. It pops up every few decades or when a significant date comes up for whatever reason based on a mathematical thing or because someone declared it so at some point. And I never bought into it myself, but I could kind of understand where, where some people were coming from when it came to the Mayan calendar prediction because December 12th was the last day on that Mayan calendar. So I kind of get it, but I always kind of thought to myself, well, what if the person who made the calendar, that calendar maker job, what if they took a break and then they just never got back to it? Maybe they got, you know, hit by a stone or something. Maybe they got sacrificed, wrong place, wrong time. I mean, couldn't have been the person in charge of the whole thing said, you know what, that's, that's far enough in the future. You can pick that back up in another century or so. The predictions that use various mathematical processes, I can even there see a slight line of reasoning, even if flawed and one I don't necessarily agree with. But the ones that just really make me want to beat my head against a wall are when people try and take numbers or passages from Scripture to predict when the world will end. Did nobody read Mark? It's right there. No one will know the day or the hour. Turning back to the rest of us, what does that day mean for us? How does that day when when we don't even know the day or the hour, how does that day impact 
us right here and right now. Have you ever thought about it? I mean, seriously, have you ever really thought about what that day means for you? I'd like to offer some, some advice on this. Think about how we order our days. Some of us may be finishing out part of a school year. Most of them are that direction. It's the end of the fiscal year coming up. And then, then the calendar year itself is wrapping up in just a shoot few short weeks. I did it at the other church, too. If you think about it, it's an end time. It's the end of the world, in a way. Not the destruction of the world, the physical world, but it is the end of the way we know and understand the world around us in this moment. Something new is coming. This end time is is colliding with the start of our church year, a new beginning. And during the end times, when we are finishing up our fiscal years, our semesters, the calendar itself, we're often tired. I mean, seriously, who's tired? Right? We're tired, we're burned out, we're exhausted. Weather's not helping. We all may be looking forward to some blessed time off if we are so fortunate to have that. These endings are in contradiction with our faith lives and journeys of of newness and being called to be awake. Just think about how we order our time. The chronological passage of seconds and minutes hours and days and weeks. It's all around us. We see this passage of time on our watches, on the clocks, our cell phones, ovens, microwaves, maybe your fridge if you've got a newer one. It's all around us. All these devices and things around us that keep time and And it feels so nice, so predictable, so measured, so orderly. And you know why we do this, right? Because it gives us the perception that we have some control, that we are in control. Because it gives us a sense of measurement, how we can put value on things. But our chronological notions of time can never be compared to or described against God's time. We have to remember our way is not God's way. Our time is not God's time. This is especially true when it comes to the timing of events. God's timing to us may may not seem nice or measured or, or orderly at all. Sometimes it feels like God's breaking into our lives at the most inconvenient times in our everyday busyness. But then again, God's time collides with our time. Today's reading from Mark's gospel is is cluing us in to God's time. Let's be real. We, We have no idea, no idea how God's time works or when it works for that matter. Even Jesus tells those listening to him in this scene that Mark describes that he himself doesn't know the hour of the day. So if Jesus doesn't know it, how could any of us even begin to think that we know it or that we deserve to know it? Could it be that this was another way that Jesus was trying to to tell his listeners, his disciples, those people who followed him, that they shouldn't worry about trying to figure out that specific hour. Instead, they should be trying to follow his guidance on being prepared for whenever it comes by being consistent in their faith, in their lives, 
and in their love. So just how do we know that God's time is at work? Is it when we can start to, to point to current events happening somewhere around the world and, and try and force them to fit into other parts of Scripture, like, say, the events described in the book of Revelation? Yeah, people have been doing that for a long time, too. But again, we're all still here. Nobody's been right yet. I think the reality that most of us miss, or maybe we even just kind of forget, is that God's timing has been at work throughout the entire course of history. God has been at work, but on God's time. Whenever I have encountered someone who pushes against the idea that God created the world in seven days, when you compare that to things like carbon dating that tell us that the earth is much older than the time we have recorded in human history, I try to remind them that scripture doesn't say seven human days, it says seven days. A day for God could be a million years, could be a second, we don't know. But God has been at work on God's time. God works in, in unexpected and incredible ways. And I, I apologize because I know that kind of sounds like a cop-out, but it's true. There are things about God and the world and, and even faith that we may never fully understand or know, at least during our time on earth. But think about it. What about that hour over 2,000 years ago when, when so many were asleep in Bethlehem. That hour when God unexpectedly broke into our world. That hour when God broke into our world in a manger as a baby. God didn't come in on a golden throne, in a chariot with an army of le legions, of angels behind him ready to go to war and take something back for the people of Israel? No. He wasn't clothed in majesty and power. This little baby was clothed in utter humility, or sorry, humility and helplessness. Baby can't feed itself, can't defend itself, can't care for itself. And that's how God entered our world. As Christians, we cannot write off that unexpected hour. We don't know when it will come. But again, December 31st, 1159, will be the end of the world as we know it. Because January 1st, 2024, 12 a.m., will be a new world. It might not look a whole different, but it will be a new world. What's important for us is not to worry about something that is out of our control and we have no way of knowing when it may happen if we will live to see it happen. What matters for us is that we are consistent in our life, our faith, and our love for God and for one another. That is what we need to do. Amen. If you would turn to pages 15 and 16 in your hymnals as we prepare to celebrate Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. 
It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets, who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. When nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time to be a light to the nations. You scatter the proud in the imagination of their hearts and have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You put down the mighty from their thrones and exalt those of low degree. You fill the hungry with good things and the rich you send away empty. Your own son came among us as a servant to be Emmanuel, your presence with us. He humbled himself in obedience to your will and freely accepted death on a cross. By the baptism of his suffering death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit in us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now the confidence of children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. In the United Methodist Church, we practice open communion. And what that means is that this table doesn't belong to me, to this church, to our denomination. This table belongs to Christ and Christ alone, and he has invited everyone to come and partake. You don't need to be a member of this congregation or our denomination or any other denomination. It doesn't matter your social or financial standing, your physical or mental ability. It doesn't matter your sexual orientation or identification. It doesn't matter all those, those ways we divide ourselves from each other, all those boxes we cram people into. That's not how this works. Christ has invited everyone because when he looks out, he sees beloved siblings, children of God, all he asks is that when you come and partake, that you do so with an open heart. This morning we will be celebrating the great Thanksgiving. The ushers will dismiss your rows. As you come forward, you'll be giving, given a piece of bread and then have the choice of a small cup 
of juice or wine, and then you can choose to receive your elements one of two ways. The first way is intinction, which is a big word that means you take your bread, you dip it in your juice or wine, and you receive your elements together. Your other option is to eat the bread and then drink the juice or wine. Neither one's better than the other, neither one's more special or more holy or anything like that. It's just two of the ways we have developed and lived into this practice over a very, very long time. Brothers and sisters, siblings, the table is now set. Come and taste that God is good. of Christ broken for you.
Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, one quick reminder, um, after the service, we invite you to stick around, come to Fellowship Hall for some snacks and stuff, and then come back and help us with decorating the tree and a few other decorating things. Um, as much as I joked around about the end of the world as we know it song is the second hymn, I will tell you that the hymn that we're going to sing was picked on purpose. Uh, because of the weather. So if you would rise as you are able for our closing hymn number 221 in the bleak midwinter. Beloved children of God, cherished siblings of our coming Savior, Jesus Christ, beware, keep alert, keep awake. God is doing awesome things that we do not expect, and Christ is coming near with great power and glory and with tenderness and grace and mercy. And now may God strengthen us to the end. Christ, draw near to our very gates, and the Holy Spirit awaken our spirits, and so with eager longing, we greet the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.